Zazen. This is a Buddhist terminology. I have explained Zen to you. It comes from the Sanskrit language Dhyan. Buddha never used Sanskrit as part of his revolution. Sanskrit was the language of the learned and it could never become the language of the masses. Buddha broke away from tradition and started speaking in the language of the masses, a language that masses could understand. Sanskrit is very precise and mathematical language. The same word can mean many things in Sanskrit language. And it is like a mathematical equation where you cannot move a single element in any way. So too in Sanskrit language. It is nothing can be changed. It is a very precise mathematical language and it is difficult for people to understand. There is no loose ends in it. Therefore Buddha broke away from the tradition and started in the language of the masses. It was a revolt against the scholarship, learnedness, the pundits, the rabbis, and the people of the scriptures whose whole heart is in their books. And because of those books, they cannot see the reality. Buddha started speaking in the language of his province, that is Pali. In Pali language, Dhyan changes its form a little bit and became Zan. When Bodhidharma reached China, Jain again changed into Chinese and it became Chan. And when the school of Rinzai, another Zen master, took the same message to Japan from China, the word Chan came very close to the very original Pali language Zen and it became in Japan Zen. In English, there is no equivalent word. There are words like concentration and contemplation, but they, are, they all belong to the mind. Dhyan means going beyond the mind. It is not concentration. It is not contemplation. It is just letting the mind be put aside and looking at the reality and your own existence directly without the mind interpreting it or interfering in any way. So it is not of the mind. It is neither concentration nor contemplation. Instead, it just lets the mind be put aside and you start looking at the reality and your own existence directly without any interference from the mind. Have you ever tried a small experiments? Watching a rose flower, can you watch the rose flower without the mind seeing how beautiful? Every time when you see a sunrise, a beautiful flower or something else, immediately the mind comes in and says, Oh, so beautiful. And if you have your mobile device in your hand, you immediately click up image of it. You have gone into the mind. Can you just watch the rose flower without the mind saying anything at all? In that moment, you are in a state of dhyan or zen. I am reminded of a story. 25 centuries ago, 
there was a great coincidence that in Greece there was Socrates and in India was Gautam Buddha and Mahavir and in China there was Lao Tzu and Chong Tzu, all expressing the existential truth, indicating towards it. It was very strange that suddenly all over the world there were at least six people fully awake their words may be different because their language was different but their indication is to the same moon that is absolutely certain they are all pointing towards one reality dhyan means looking either outside or inside without mind coming in place without thinking, just looking straight forward. Your eyes become only a mirror. Mirror does not think. It is the mind that gives the conclusions. When your eyes become simply a mirror, to reflect that is in front of it, that is the state of dhyana. Loosely it is translated as meditation. The mirror neither does it condemn or condemn as ugly nor does it appreciate as beautiful. Mirror is simply non-judgmental. Dhyan is exactly a non-judgmental state of mirror-like consciousness. When your consciousness acts like a mirror and there is no judgment, it simply reflects that state is known as dhyan. It is just seeing and not seeing anything. Just being with it. When you see a beautiful flower, just be with it. Just be it. Something will begin to blossom within you. When you see the sunrise, be with it. Allow something parallel to happen within you. Your own inner sun will start rising. Then seeing becomes total. And in that seeing is the truth, is the good, is the beauty. Because of this phenomena, in the East there is no equivalent word for philosophy. In the East, the word that has become equivalent is darshan. Darshan means to envision, to see. But darshan refers to a totality. But darshan refers to a totally different dimension than philosophy. Philosophy means love of wisdom. It is love of knowledge. And darshan means just the opposite, not the love of wisdom or of knowledge, instead of seeing. Darshan means seeing to envision. Dhyan is the method, the path and darshan, seeing the truth with your own eyes is the goal of the entire Eastern effort. What is Zazen? Zen is just once or twice a day. In the morning when the sun is rising and the birds are singing, you sit silently by the side of the ocean or the river or the lake. It is not something that you have to do continuously. It is just like any other activity. You take the bath. That does not mean that for 24 hours you have to continue taking bath. Zazen exactly means that. Taking a shower 
continuously. Zen is like taking a shower. Zazen is 24 hours around the clock, remaining aware, alert, in the state beyond mind. Zen is like taking a shower and Zazen is like a 24 hours round the clock, remaining aware, alert in the state beyond mind. Your activities should show it, your words should show it, even your walking should show it. The grace, the beauty, the truth, the validity, and the authority, all it must reflect. Thus Zazen is an extension of Zen around the clock. Just because of Zazen, monasteries came into existence. If you are living an ordinary life of a householder, you cannot manage to contemplate to be in a state of Zen 24 hours a day, to be aware moment to moment. Every moment a circumstance and situation comes and we tend to lose our awareness. Zazen means a 24 hours around the clock whether you are sleeping, doing anything, that thread of awareness is not lost. As a householder, you cannot manage to contemplate to be in a state of Zen 24 hours a day. You have to do many other things as well. And each time that happens, you lose the thread of awareness. In moments of pain and pleasure and afflictions, we tend to lose our thread. In moments of exhilaration too, we lose the thread. And there is every possibility that while you are doing other things, you may forget the undercurrent. So monasteries came into existence. The society decided that people who want to go deeper into their being are doing such a great experiment for the whole humanity. Because if even one man becomes a Buddha, within the whole humanity rises a little bit in consciousness. It may not be apparent. It is just like when the river Ganges so big that by the time it reaches to meet the ocean, its name, Ganges changes to Ganga Sagar, the place where Ganges merges in the ocean is known as Ganga Sagar. That means Ganga, it comes from the two words, Ganga, the river Ganges, and Sagar, the ocean. The River Ganges has assumed the form of ocean, the ocean of Ganges. It became ocean so vast as it moves into the ocean. The ocean certainly rises a little bit. The ocean is so vast that even hundreds and thousands of rivers never create a flood in the ocean, but certainly even a single drop raises the level. At least you can comprehend it. A single drop losing itself in the ocean, an ocean is something more than it was before, one dew drop more. The people of those days were certainly more subjective, of more clarity that the real evolution of man is not in developing machines, technology. The real evolution has to happen in the consciousness of man. His consciousness has to 
become a pinnacle, an Everest, a peak, a peak that raises high above the clouds. If even a single man succeeds, it is not only his success. Instead, it is success of all men, past, present, future, because it gives a clear-cut indication that we are not trying. Otherwise, we could also be Buddhas. Each one of you has the potentiality, the seed of being a Buddha. But not many, once in a while, a rare one attains to total fruition. Those who have tried have become. It is our intrinsic nature. The society supported the monks and the monasteries. There were thousands of monasteries with thousands of monks who were not doing anything. Society allowed them. We are engaged in production. We will provide you with food and clothes. You go totally into your effort of reaching the highest peak of consciousness. Your success is not going to be only your success. If thousands of people become Buddhas, the whole humanity without any effort will find a certain rise in the level of consciousness. During the time when Buddha, Pythagoras, Lao Tse, Chang Su, Mahabir, all were existing together, the consciousness was as this pinnacle. This was a great insight. And the society took over the burden of thousands of monks, of thousands of monasteries, all their needs were fulfilled by the society. Today that society has disappeared because even today the concept that you are a hidden Buddha has disappeared. A strange idea has caught humanity that every man is an island and that is sheer nonsense. Even the islands are not islands. Just go down a little deeper and they are joined with the continent. You think your house is separate from the neighbor's house? Go deep down. Somewhere the land on which your house is built is touching the land on which the house of your neighbor is also built. Somewhere deep down there is an inner connection and that we cannot see. We are bound to each other by an invisible current. We are bound to each other by a causeless force. Everybody is joined. It is just a question of going a little deeper. Our roots are entangled with each other. Our source of life is the same. It was a tremendous insight of those days that they decided, particularly for example, in Tibet, every family had to contribute one child to the monastery. And in the monastery, he had to do only Zaze, try to be aware round the clock under each circumstance and situation, moment to moment. He had no other work to distract him. Now that possibility does not exist. This is the reason that I have managed different devices so that even remaining in the world without going to a monastery, you can change an undercurrent of fire. You can change, manage to change an undercurrent of fire that slowly and slowly becomes like your breathing and one day becomes like a flame and that flame, when it kindles deep within, there is an explosion, explosion of consciousness and in that very moment you attain to your fruition.